Welcome back. Well, today I am joined by Dr. Diane Kirsten, who is here on behalf of Harvard Eye. Well, Diane, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. Thank you. Good morning. So, you know, there's an awful lot of things that I, I think that can be talked about when it comes to surgeries, and you guys have so many different types of solutions. So today we're going to talk about pan optics and vividity, which are uh, a couple different uh, solutions to uh, a variety of different things that people are dealing with. So maybe you can give me a brief overview of what those would be used for. Sure. So these are lenses for cataract surgery, and vividity is quite new. That's why I thought to talk about it today. Um, we've had pan optics for about two years. And it's a trifocal implant for cataract surgery that allows people to see distance and mid-range and close after cataract surgery. And it's been very successful. Um, it has, uh, the second uh, image shows it has uh, rings, diffractive rings in the lens that allow um, the light to be focused at distance mid-near. And it's a great lens and it gives very good uh, near vision, which Many people having cataract surgery today really want to see at all different uh, distances. Yeah. Yeah. If there's any disadvantages that there's these diffractive rings and they can um, cause some halos and glare with night driving and some loss of contrast sensitivity. Right. So we're always looking for the newest, best thing. And Vividity is the newest lens out. Um, and uh, I thought I would talk about it a little bit. Yeah, you know, so when you look at that lens, uh, you, you can't feel those ridges, right? No, no, they're, they're back behind your pupil. So um, that lens is behind the pupil, in the capsule of your original lens, being held in place the way your original lens was. And you don't feel them, but they diffract light so that you see. It's kind of like a bifocal in a pair of glasses, but it's... It's in a circular fashion. Yeah, it's just amazing. So when you look through that particular type of lens, mm -hmm. is it as if you've had, like you have glasses on, that you can mm -hmm. see, but you can see you said far away and up close? Yes, it's, it's like you have a perfect contact lens on that lets you see at all ranges. Um, and um, this technology has been around for about 20 years, but it keeps getting better and then the next lens is a little better. And, and that's what's made it exciting. Yeah, um, because this by far Vividity is the best bifocal or trifocal lens that we've had, and patients, you know, really love it. So okay, it's really exciting. Now there's another there's another option that you could do. It's called Vividity IOL. So what does that one do? So Vividity is a new design, and it's it's a very cool lens. Um, rather than having these uh, circular diffractive zones, it has a little elevated area in the middle that's kind of a beam redirector or um, uh, it's a way of, of creating an extended depth of focus when light comes into your eye. Mm -hmm. And it's a really great lens for distance vision and for mid vision. Okay. And there's not as much uh, of issues with halos and glare at night because it's it's a much smaller zone that's um that's uh creating the extended depth of focus and not as many rings the disadvantage is it doesn't really bring the vision quite as close in so if you really want to be able to read a book at you know 16 inches then the pan optics is is probably your better lens but if you don't mind putting on weak reading glasses, 125s to read a book, but everything else is pretty good, then the, the Vividity is a great lens. So when, when you have a patient that comes in, do you give them choices? Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I, I, think, I think the important thing for cataract surgery today is that patients know that they have choices. And the choices run everything from, you can select the lens that Medicare covers, and that's fine, and that would give you a vision in one distance. For example, far away, and then you wear plus two reading glasses, or close up, and then you wear distance glasses. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people pick that, and it's absolutely fine. These newer implants that are um, aimed at making us need glasses less, they're more expensive, so that's a disadvantage of them. And, and a lot of people are interested in them, and, but not everyone. And I, I feel fine. I do a lot of regular 
monofocal implants that are covered by insurance as well. Okay. Well, it is nice, like you said, to have choices. And if you want to spend the extra money, you certainly have that option to do so. So that's nice. I mean, you know, there was a time when you didn't have a choice and get what you get. <laughs> there was, I, that's when I trained. You pretty much got whatever we could get you closest to and you wear glasses. So it, it is exciting to see all these new advances in product surgery. It's made it fun. Absolutely. I mean, for you as a surgeon, you know, it's nice to know that all these different things work. And uh, you've had experience with them as well. Mm -hmm. One other thing that you have on here is the Al Alcon Vividi EDOF cataract lens. Now, does that differ from what you just talked about? No, that's the same. It's oh, uh, it is. Okay, yeah, the EDOF is extended depth of focus, and that's that's kind of the term for this kind of implant, rather than a bifocal or a trifocal implant. That little elevated area right in the middle ah. just uh, is like a beam. Uh, changer and as light comes in it's able to create this extended uh, depth about a diopter and a half which is enough for someone to see distance and then be able to see their computer for oh, okay great great now uh, unfortunately something that does happen with many people after eye surgery in general is they get a lot of dry eyes what are some things that you can do about that well so i i was thinking about what to talk about today and it's funny it's pouring rain and it's not dry today, but we've had a really dry fall. And then when it got cold in the winter, everyone had forced heating on in their houses. And, and we had a rash of dry eye patients, not just after surgery, but without surgery, because everyone's eyes were dry and irritated. But what we found when LASIK um, became popular in the late 90s is that a lot of LASIK patients would have dry eyes after LASIK. It's very common. and has to do with the incision on the cornea and the corneal nerves being, uh, being uh, cut as part of the procedure and then taking a long time to, to heal. Mm -hmm. And so cataract surgery can have the same thing. And a lot of patients aren't aware of it when they come in for cataract surgery um, and post-op are surprised that they're dry and they're a little blurry. So we've just really been trying to educate people and explain it. And you know, if you are a little dry post-op and you're a little blurry, there's all kinds of ways of treating it that, you know, that we will do to, to make you better. But this is such a common problem in dry climates. Well, right. And, you know, I think in the past, I've talked to Dr. Hovanessian about some of these different treatments as well, but you've got, you've got some choices here. You've got some eye ointments you could put on at night. Now, one thing you have in here is the humidifier in the bedroom. I, I didn't realize that would be used for dry eyes. I thought that was more, yeah. I mean, I guess it does bring moisture in for when you're ill. It's, well, so when you, when you sleep at night is when your eyes tend to be the driest, and it's because we're not blinking, we're not producing tears. So if you have a bedroom, you can close off in a humidifier, and you create this really humid you know, bedroom where you can read and sleep, then usually your eyes will feel a lot better in the morning. Mm -hmm. I always do that when I go skiing in Mammoth because it's so dry up there. I have dry eyes. I just keep the humidifier on all the time. Oh. So dry eyes are a big problem, but a lot of the things to treat dry eyes are just kind of simple. You put an artificial tear ointment in at night, uh, the humidifier, you use a lot of artificial tears during the day. Mm -hmm. Warm compresses can be really helpful because it gets the... Um, the oil glands on the edge of the eyelid open and the oily part of the tear film um, better, um, you know, more healthy. Right. And then the bottom slide shows um, punctal plugs, which are a really great treatment for dry eye. Basically, we produce tears out in this area in the lacrimal gland, but every time we blink, tears are draining into the upper and lower tear duct in the inner corner of our eyes. And when you blink, there's almost a suction mechanism that draws your tears into your uh, upper and lower puncta. So we can put plugs in, usually we just put one plug in the lower puncta on each eye, and then your own tears stay in your eye longer. They don't drain off every time you blink. Okay. So that's a very common way to treat this in the office, and it's a simple thing to do, and there's several companies who make these great little plugs. It's like a little little tiny sink stopper, so I think of it. <laughs> it blocks your tears from draining, makes your eyes more lubricated, and yeah, and hugely. Well, that sounds like a good option. Is it, is, and you said it's a simple procedure. And how long do those last? Well, they're great. Now there's size. So they come in like 0 0.4, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. So we put in the right size and usually they'll stay in at least a year or two. Oh, 
okay, that's great. And is that something that might be covered by insurance? It is. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's good. Insurance. It's very easy to do. Um, it's a great um, way to treat dry eyes, especially when they're exacerbated by eye surgery. Okay. Well, I'm imagining that there'll be more dry eyes coming because spring is coming and there'll be a lot of allergens in the air. <laughs> yeah. We always have a lot of dry eyes. It's California is a dry place, really. Yeah, exactly. It's getting drier by the minute, with the exception, of course, when we have our rain. But boy, do we need the rain. So it's a good yeah. thing. Yeah. Well, Dr. Kirsten, thank you so much for visiting with us. I appreciate it. Oh, you're welcome. Thank you very much for having me. And we'll be right back after this. <laughs>